Jordan Peterson gives you tips on how to stop being undisciplined in the video. Like and subscribe for more amazing content. If, if you're going along with something that violates your conscience, then you lessen yourself. You're starting to pay a big price then. And so at some point, at some point you have to think, and this is something I walk through with my clients all the time when they were trying to make a decision. You know, everyone looks at the costs of making a decision. But almost no one looks at the costs of not making the decision. And the reason for that is like, well, you're sitting there right now and the sky isn't falling on you. And so you're not calculating the costs of sitting there because nothing's happening. And then if you decided to do something different, you might calculate the costs of doing that. But you've already zeroed out the costs of inertia. But they aren't zero. There's no zero cost. There's risk here and there's risk here. And and you don't like that idea because you want security and no bloody wonder. It's no wonder you want security. But when you're making a decision, you need to reawaken the costs of inertia. I mean, those are, those are opportunity costs, let's say, something like that. There, there, are way, you know, there are ways they are formally considered. But just going along as you are when everything is changing around you is also a costly decision. And so if you know that, you think, well, there's danger here and there's danger here, then that weirdly enough that frees you up because then you can pick the danger that you prefer now the, mm -hmm. the price you pay is the realization that there's no security down either road and that's you have to wake up to that now and then in your life it's very unpleasant it's not surprising people don't do it but again there the the costs of of failing to do it are worse so if you don't have your own plan, painful as it is to develop one, partly because you have to take your own inadequacies into account. Oh yes, and you also mentioned, you know, you, you posit an ideal, this is what I want or this is who I could be. The farther away that is from you, the more inadequate you feel in relationship to it. You know, so that's uh... another reason to avoid it. But yes, well, that's why every ideal is a judge. There's no getting away from that. now. If it's too much for you, I might say, well, make a lesser ideal, like try to pursue something that doesn't intimidate you into paralysis. What you really want to do is you want to lay out a, a plan that has a, a pretty high end aim, but that also consists of steps that aren't too intimidating. That, that, so you have to ask yourself, um, I would like to do this. Um, I should do it, but would I do it? And the answer is likely to be no often because you know what you're like you're supposed to go to the gym but you don't mm -hmm. it's like okay well maybe you won't go to the gym but maybe you'd walk half a block every second day something like that and you have to ask yourself i write about this in the first chapter about the advantage of being a fool you know if you notice that you're not so good at something then you can calibrate down the goal until a fool like you can manage it mm -hmm. and then you can attain it and then you're not quite so much of a fool and then, you know, you have a sense in your mind of what you'd be like if you let yourself go. Oh, well, I'd be sick, man. I'd be under a bridge or something. I'd probably be behind like a, I don't know, living behind a Tim Hortons or some, you know, some type of place. I'm trying to make it local to you, but like some, yeah, I'd be living, you know, I'd just be doing drugs or just, I'd have no family. Yeah, so for you, so it's, for you, it's a vision of homelessness and, and substance abuse. Yeah. Yeah, well, you got to ask yourself, like, okay, think about that. Is that what you want? And I don't, I mean, think about it. Imagine that right. that's what awaits you. Well, then you have a better thing to be afraid of. It's like, afraid as I am of, of gripping my own destiny, here's the alternative. Right. Part, of, part of being motivated is to be afraid of the proper things. You know, afraid as you might be of success, and fair enough, it's possible that you should be more afraid of stagnation and failure but you have to make those things real for you before they have any power why would you not aim at the best that you could conceptualize if you were going to aim right um, if you know what you want then you know when you're failing mm. if you don't allow yourself to know what you want you can keep that foggy you you, you might be afraid to make it clear because other people could deny it to you too. And failing to make any of that clear protects you right now. But it's really hard on you over the medium to long term. Because if you don't make it clear to yourself what you want or to other people, the probability that you're just going to stumble into it is pretty low. Mm -hmm. and, and you can put that off indefinitely day after day, but 
the problem with that is that you age while you're doing that and there's a, obviously a price to be paid for that. The problem with wanting something is that in all probability you're going to have to work for it, you're going to have to make sacrifices. As a clinician I frequently saw that my clients were afraid to make a move. Um, I talk about that a little bit. Oh yeah. I think it's in, that's in chapter five again, do not do what you hate, which is full of sort of practical advice I suppose in relationship to career. People are often afraid to make a change, to make a plan, to make a decision, to take responsibility. And the right response to that is, yes, no wonder you're afraid. It's no, this is frightening. People, you know, they, they want to get a new job. So they have to, um, they have to form, format and update their, their CVs, their resumes. Well, just that alone is, is enough to stop many, many people cold because First of all, you have to gather up all that information and then second, you have to make a coherent narrative account of your life and third, you have to face all the things that you did in the past that didn't work out the way they were supposed to. You have to take account of the gaps in your, in your resume. Like, to make a resume is to take a cold hard look at yourself. It's like, ooh, God, who the hell wants to do that? Like an inventory kind of. Yes, exactly. And, but, but. And so you're afraid of that and you put it off and you put it off. And, oh, yeah. And you, you can't say, well, don't be afraid of that. What you can say, I think that's more useful is, okay, you don't like your job. You don't like your current position. You don't like your status. You don't like your income. You don't like your trajectory. That's why you want to change. Okay, well, let's say you don't make your resume. Then what does the world look like in five years? Like frightening as it is to make a plan, um, unhappy stasis just disintegrates right and so one of the things we do do in the self-authoring program in the future authoring program is say well um if you deteriorated according to your own vices and that went that got out of hand what would that look like five years down the road you know everyone knows oh, some yeah. people some people flirt with with alcoholism or drug abuse or and so, okay, so you have to build a plan. I have a tool for that that I often recommend for people called self-authoring. And it is, it, it, it was developed in an attempt to help people write out, well, an account of themselves, right. past, present, and future, but relevant to this discussion is to, to make a plan. It's like, what is it that you need to thrive in the world, or at least not to become bitter? And if you don't have your own plan that you're committed to, right, and honestly committed to, what that means is that you will be the pawn of other people's decisions. As the powers around you become more and more invasive, but also, also of more utility to you to some degree. I mean, we don't want to be completely negative about computational power. As the, as the forces around you have more and more capacity to grip your attention, it stands to reason that you're going to have to be the captain of your own ship to a greater and greater degree. Otherwise, you, you'll, fall, you'll fall prey to those who wish to monetize your attention.